have the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who's doing the same missions as Jesus and Moses and Noah and Abraham, calling people to the same religion, the same way. Submit to God. Do God's will. And this is what you're doing, Islam. Yeah. That's what Islam is calling you to. It's, it really is all the prophets. It's simple. They all worship God. And Jesus, peace be upon him, he worshiped God. Yeah. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he worshiped God. And that's what Muslims do. We just worship God. And we do it five times a day and it feels great. Okay, good. For, for the Texans and, and the Canadians and all the other people watching us all around the globe, you don't have no bomb here. There's no, nothing strapped to them. No it's bomb. All, it's all good, as they say, in the hood. <laughs> yeah, it's all good in the hood, down in that wood. <laughs> all right, yeah. So we know this is silly. Islam doesn't teach any of these things. Islam is calling people to worship the one God and noble behavior and doing good. Right. So you went also and you did the fifth, you, you've already done that. You established the prayer five times a day. Yes. And now you also, tell us about your experience. You went to Hajj. Oh, man. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, it says when you go to the Valley of Baca and to make your pilgrimage. So I, I saw that, but I didn't know how. And that's what I like about Islam is it teaches me the, the how. Well, where do I go? I went to Mecca, the Kaaba, the central location, the heart chakra of the earth. I went there. And I saw one point, there was actually six billion people there, or I'm sorry, six million people there roughly. And they were white, they were black, they were Asian, they were from all walks of life, rich, they were poor, and they were all doing the same thing. They were all there just to worship God. And they were all there trying to do good deeds, handing water out, giving people dates, giving people food, you know, smiling, saying, peace be with you, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. And if you look in the Bible, peace, Jesus, peace be upon him. That's how he greeted people. Peace be with you. And that's what Islam is. When I went overseas, I saw it firsthand. I never, I've never in my life, I never was a crier. Like, I was always Mr. Tough Guy growing up in the society with the culture and the music and the rap and the movies. And then when Islam entered in my heart, my family, my friends, they can all sense and feel the peace that I have. And I, whenever I hear the call to prayer, whenever... They, they make a call to prayer. I cried when I was over there. And whenever somebody beautiful who was praying, I cried just by hearing it. And I, I, I put the, the, the Quran in my mom's ear. It's like a prayer on 4th of July, last 4th of July. And I said, Mom, how does this make you feel? And she listened to it. And she literally, my mom and my sister both, same night, they both started crying, just hearing God's words from the Quran. And... It's peace. Going overseas and seeing that, there's nothing that compares in my mind. And I just wish and I hope that God will open up the hearts of everybody to see and feel what I've felt being able to go overseas. I took my brother Muhammad. He's the guy who kind of said, hey, he started asking me the deeper questions in life. What's the purpose of life? Where are you going to go when you die? And I took hummed to all praise of God. God allowed me to take him because all we are is tools, Eddie. All we are is tools. We're either being deceived or we're being guided. And all praises of God that we've been guided. And I was able to take him and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Tell us in short before we go to break, your wife also, she's a, a revert, a convert. She accepted Islam. What happened with this? Yeah, this is great. My wife, she, um, she was like a Bible thumper, like super Jesus freak. And, and her friend decided she was going to become a Muslim and she said to her friend you can't become a Muslim my wife was like no no you can't become a Muslim and her friend said okay well prove me why not so my wife before I even knew this girl this is three years ago she starts looking into Islam and all praises of God with a sincere heart God led her to submitting to him alone and none of the creations. She accepted Islam. She accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah, all thanks is the God. We'll be right back with more here with Justin on the Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone
Back here on the Dean Show with Justin, a Texan. You were born in Texas? Yeah, I was born in Texas. Born in Texas. Okay, uh, let's just back it up a little bit. For those people, you know, the, the Donnie Bravos, uh, Donnie Brascos, and, you know, the, the women who are out there, who are, you know, people who are living this life of debauchery, you know, just really just going from nightclub to party, you know, even even some people get a little more sophisticated, so they might not want to go to the club, but, you know, it's just more about the wine tasting and, you know, posh lifestyle and, you know, pritzy, uh, 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 you know, just the glamour and the glitz and following all the celebrities and whatnot. You know, what, do, do, you, do you have a chance to sit, now that you found the truth, okay, and it wasn't something that you just, you know, you fill with this ghost and you're humping and jumping and that, it was something that you, you took a, you know, uh, this is something that stimulated your mind, is it right? Right. So now how do you communicate? Do you still have some friends who are in that lifestyle? Yes. You still try to communicate to them. So for those people who are out there who are still living that kind of like hedonistic lifestyle, they don't want to talk about anything unless it's girls, boys, and the, you know, partying. Uh, partying what time. How do you communicate to them? Well, we're all going to die. That's inevitable. And we're all going to be judged. Let's say I'm totally wrong. Let's say I'm totally wrong. Well, at least I'm living a righteous life and I'm doing good deeds and I'm taking care of my family and my friends. Let's say I am right and that there is only one God, which I know for a fact there is, and that we are going to be judged, then I'm happy to be on this side because this is the path, the straight path. Sir al tal Musakim, guide us to the straight path. And all praises of God, you know, all it takes is a little sincerity. All it takes is asking yourself alone in your room, on the ground. Ask the Creator. Don't ask any creations. Ask God. That's what Allah means. Allah means the one God, the only God. T tell us also, uh, now for the people, like you had your wife present day who was against that other sister looking into Islam. So a lot of people now, when you mention Islam, uh, like your parents did, oh, you're, you're going to blow something up now, oh, you're a terrorist now. So people, they get nervous, they get scared to come out and even to... Uh, See, to go beyond this courage, finding the courage to, to move forward. So for the people that have many misconceptions, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of people fighting the truth. So for those people that think, okay, Islam oppresses women, Islam is about terrorism, Islam is, you know, backwards, barbaric. Now that you've studied it, you've sat with scholars, you've sat with people, you know, and you've learned it, what do you have to say for those people? We don't have so much time to go over, and we've covered a lot of this in other shows. What do you have for those people that ha might have this on their mind? Well, you know, just like Nike says, just do it. And that's just what I did. Whenever I don't want to do it, I just do it. And my recommendation would be just to pray, you know, sit down and take a moment. Personally, I'm 24 years old. Eddie, I wish somebody would have told me about Islam a long time ago because I've never felt this kind of peace. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. The end. Simple. Yeah. yeah. So any now, okay, you went to Hajj. You're praying five times a day. Uh, tell us a little bit more before we close. How just you know how's it benefit benefited your life and some of the the other things that you know you do in life. So people, you know, because you see, it's not it's not a big deal being a Muslim. It's something that it's a big deal because you got paradise in store. Mm -hmm. It's the true way of life that one needs to live to please the Creator of the heavens and earth. Because if you're submitting to God, you're doing God's will. That's the way God's going to be pleased with you. And it's, it's something that, that brings that, when you have peace, peace, happiness, contentment, not worshiping the creation, not living a paganistic lifestyle, just doing good, and good defined by what God yeah. says is good. So now, you know, we talked about prayer, we talked about, uh, you did the Hajj, and what else? I mean, is your, has, have your parents seen your character get better? Yeah. Are, are, are you more, you know, being more, con are you more conscious of God now? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You, I was always, I was things. always kind of greedy, because I, okay. I always had, a, you know, I was making good money. I never really treated my folks the right way. My friends, you know, I don't know what they would have said about back me back in the day. Now, my, I, I help my family with their bills. You know, they're struggling. I try to help them out. I try to do good deeds. And what I love about Islam is I always have God on my mind. Whether I open the door for somebody, my intention is always in my heart. I say before I do a good deed, my intention is to please God. And that's what's important, Eddie. Just always trying to please God and having that conscious of God at all times, knowing that I'm going to be judged. And 
you know, whether it be like somebody, some, a billboard on the side of the road or something on the TV. Now I'll cover my eyes whenever I see something that I should, you know, we know we shouldn't be looking at. And it feels good to do good because when you do good, what happens? It breeds good. It breeds good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Justin. Peace be with you, brother. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that was another person's story on how they came to the way of life that's not organized by man or men, but it's organized by the creator of men, by the creator of women, the one God, the God that Jesus worshipped. We're all going to die. You heard our guests give you some good advice. Think about death. Think about that moment when it's all over. It's finished. Kaput. And you got to leave all the material things behind. Where are you going when you die? Islam tells you the purpose of life, why you've been created. Islam tells you everything you need to do to be successful in this life. And Islam is not calling you to, to hurt innocent men, women, and children. It's not calling you to all these things that some people will try to, Pete King, Pepe King will try to have you believe. No, Islam is calling you to goodness and good breeds good. And it's all built on the bedrock, the bedrock of worshiping the one God. The same God that Jesus worshiped, that's the God that you worship. Nobody else. And if you want to read the verbatim word of God, it's free. Give us a call, 1-800-662-ISLAM. And until next time, we'll see you. Peace be unto you.